Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Stuff I Heard podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Peak, and today happens to be Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day to all our veterans out there. I am wearing my Marine Corps hoodie today in honor of the Marines. Their birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Marines. God bless you. Semper Fi. Um, so let's talk about some stuff I heard because uh, there's been lots of cool stuff that's come out on TV this past week, this past month or whatever. Some series that have carried over. Uh, most recently uh, was the season finale for season two of Loki on Disney+. Plus. Loki is fantastic. Um, Tom Hiddleston plays Loki, the god of chaos. And if you've seen any of the Thor movies or the Avenger movies, you know that he is supposed to portray this god of mischief and chaos and the god of lies and all this other stuff and he's supposed to be the bad guy okay and the one thing that this show has done is it has captured him as being a hero because he is a hero um you know famously we talk about uh famous quotes from people and during world war ii there was a navy admiral jester nimitz who is famous for quoting um, uncommon valor is a common virtue, which means we all, have, we all have it within ourselves to become great. We all have it within ourselves to become a hero. We all have the capability of doing the thing that's hard because it's what's right. And they took that idea and ran with it with these stories, and I love it because it is true. Um, you don't have to be a certain person you don't have to have the right look or the right background story you can at any time become a hero when the time is needed to do the right thing sometimes that means self-sacrifice which means you give up your life to help others and we honor those people listen there is no greater honor than realizing that you can save someone else and if you have the ability to do it with your life it is there there is no amount of um praise and love for those people okay that is one of the biggest reasons why this country has such a history of honoring our veterans because we understand that sacrifice is not easy and that it is ultimately the reason why we are who we are while we're here is because of the sacrifice of other people. So listen, <clears throat> for all the veterans out there who are here and abroad, God bless you. And, you know, for the writers of this show, Loki, you kind of tapped into that. I'm just going to tell you, you, you're really starting to tap into the feels on what it means to be a hero and what it means to, um, uh, Put aside your own wants and desires to help out other people. Um, this show is just incredible. Okay, so let's talk about it. Um, if you guys want to see a very in-depth discussion about the show, I really highly recommend you going to YouTube and checking out a guy. His channel is uh, Emergency Awesome. His name is Charlie. Charlie does a really good breakdown with video elements showing you all the characters and all of the variations and I would love to be able to do the editing to the to the level that he has, but I think he is a uh, hundred thousand steps ahead of where I am as far as knowing how to do that sort of stuff. I've just been lucky enough to figure out how to put a camera in front of my face and talk. <laughs> so, for whatever reason that is, um, yeah, he's he does a fantastic job, and he did a great breakdown video of the season finale. Um, I watched it yesterday morning. And I was completely floored. I was impressed with the ability um, of the story to keep you captured, keep you entertained. And also, uh, Tom Hiddleston, this is his best acting I've ever seen him do. You know, they famously interviewed him um, when he talked about being cast to play Loki in the Avengers. And they wanted some unknown characters to play these characters. Because they didn't want anybody to have any preconceptions about who these guys are supposed to be. Plus, I think they knew they had a hit show 
and even without the actors, the show was going to be a blockbuster. So they wanted to get people with the right character within themselves so that as they grew and as they became part of this MCU universe, that they could represent the brand well and also grow with actors and continue to tell the stories just like the original comics did. And they're doing that. All of them are doing that. Um, but I got to tell you, Tom's acting in this is really incredible. <laughs> so if you guys are keeping up with the TVA and Tom's part in this, yet Loki's part in this, um, this episode was just fantastic because he realizes that while the multiverse is tearing apart with this, um, this time loom, that there is a component that needs to be there that is not created. And he does a great uh, Groundhog Day version of going back in time, but he can do it sort of when he wants. So he can just repeat time, repeat time, repeat time, go back, learn things. It even has these interesting forward jumps where it says, you know, a few centuries later, um, as the tagline, because he has to learn everything that Obi knows and everything that Casey knows and everything that Timely knows. And then he gets to the point where he knows all of it and finds out that everything that they're working for doesn't work. And then, then he has to figure out, okay, well, what do I need to do to stop this from happening? Because no matter what we do here doesn't matter. So he goes to the end of time to meet he who remains in the original from season one, where he and Sylvie face off against Timely, or he who remains, and Sylvie kills him. And that's what originally breaks the timeline, or breaks the sacred timeline, the one that we all have known and followed thus far. And in there, he realizes, after repeating it over and over and over so many times, that the only way he can stop it is to kill Sylvie, and he doesn't want to kill Sylvie because he loves her, because she's a variant of him. She's a version of him and he doesn't love anybody any more than he loves himself. So, but he genuinely loves her um, and he can't stop her. He doesn't want to stop her. He's now looking at her and the other people that he's become friends with in the TVA through this eons of tasks that they've done together as his friends and he wants to protect his friends. And so <clears throat> he has a moment where he gets to stop time and have a conversation, a real conversation with he who remains. And I was looking forward to this conversation since the beginning because I was like, okay, so now we're going to actually hear them plainly speak about what it means, what they can do, even with all of the rules of the of stopping time that we've learned from watching the show, what is the element that we're missing? And basically, Tommy says, you have two choices. You can kill her and protect the timeline, to protect the sacred timeline, me, um, or you can just let this keep repeating for eternity, and I'll still be here because this is how this works, and time will just loop on itself over and over and over again. And Loki doesn't like either one of those options, so he decides to find a third option. And basically, he goes back further has a really great conversation with Mobius, um, Owen Wilson. This is his best acting also um, about what it means and what, what sacrifice means and what it means to make the hard choice. Um, and you see the weight of all of his decisions mounting up to the very end where basically he steps through, he breaks the, um, the multiplier or whatever you want to call it, the time loom. He breaks the time loom and all of the branches of time are scattered and they're dying off, but you get to see his full power as a frost giant and as a, uh, as a God, um, grab the timelines and then use all of the power that he's learned to then keep them alive. So then he's grabbing all of the timelines, every one that he can gather, and he makes his way, breaks his own timeline, makes his way to the end of time, to where he who remains was, 
rebuilds the throne and sits on it with his full God powers and holding on to all of the timelines and basically using his power to keep all of the timelines going at the same time. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Um, the good thing about the sacred timeline was that we had one story to follow, which means you only had one version of everybody. When you have all of the versions, that means you also have all of the versions of the good version and all of the versions of the bad version. So all of the villains, all of the characters, again, Loki now for the second time has become the focal point and the center point of all of the other shows that are going to happen. Um, I've heard it said that he is now the god of stories and there's echoes of his father saying you were born to be king him saying on multiple times uh i want a throne and then later on saying i don't want a throne and realizing that he ends up taking a throne with the responsibility of being completely alone because that's the only way that all of his friends survive and without speaking a word for several minutes of him gathering these timelines and and walking through time using his magic to create steps to get to the throne and building the throne with the um gold inlaid uh, portions to hold it together much like uh, the japanese art of like when a plate breaks they use gold to bond it back together and so it it looks beautiful but it's also preserving the break because you everything that's broken is still beautiful and still usable. Um, and they captured that perfectly in this. So, listen, to all the writers of Loki, Kevin Feige, all of you guys over there at MCU, uh, Tom Hiddleston, you guys have killed it with this episode. This this season is just phenomenal. Um, I want to watch the last episode multiple times. It was that good. So, my hat's off to you. It's just fantastic. Um, okay, let's talk about another series that I watched. Um, I'm sure if you have Netflix, you've seen this advertised. But I just happened to look it up one day because I was curious. Um, Matthew Broderick has been making a lot of movies and television here lately i don't know exactly why he took such a long break maybe it was to raise kids maybe it was because he couldn't get cast because they thought he was too old to play characters or maybe he i don't know maybe he was just being selective or just wanted to take time off from acting but um you know famously we know him as uh ferris bueller um and then he didn't work for a long time uh him and his wife sarah michelle i mean not not sarah michelle you know his wife is i can't even think of her name um they are a famous hollywood couple she's gone on and done the sex in the city episodes and the series and all other kind of movies and stuff and uh what is her name god why am i blanking on this i didn't look this up before now because i wasn't planning on talking about it uh yeah sarah jessica parker yeah and they have twins Aww. They have a son and twins who are turning 20. Okay, so maybe he took time off to raise his kids. Um, but yeah, so he's the main character in this, sort of. Uh, in this show, Painkiller, it centers around Purdue Pharma and their creation of Oxycontin. Uh, Contin, I guess that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. Um, <clears throat> this was, uh, difficult to watch because, uh, the opioid and pandemic hit everybody in this country really hard. Um, matter of fact, it hurt a lot of people around the world. Uh, it was seen as the decline of our civilization, just as much as crack cocaine was back in the eighties and nineties. Um, right off the bat there's a beginning of every episode where someone is saying 
this show is based on true events, although there are characters and storylines that are fictionalized. Um, what is not fiction is, and then they hold up a picture of their loved one, a son, a daughter, a brother, a sister who died of an overdose. Um, and it was hard to watch. Uh, if you know anybody who struggled with addiction, it is very real. Um, they highlight a few characters, one in particular, uh, Taylor Kitsch, K-I-T-S-C-H. He plays a guy named Glenn in this. Um, starts off as a mechanic. He gets injured on the job. They prescribe him pain meds. He gets addicted to pain meds. And it gets darker and darker and darker. And it looks exactly like that in real life. Um, he should get a, uh, some kind of recognition or award for playing this guy. It was pretty, uh, it's pretty hard to watch um, because it was so real. Um, one of my favorite actresses, uh, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but I'm going to try. Uzo Abduba, Aduba, Uzo Aduba. Uh, she plays Edie Flowers in this. She's supposed to be an investigator for the um, district attorney's office in Virginia. Um, she is an amazing actress. Uh, she's most famous for playing a character called Crazy Eyes on Orange is the New Black. Um, everything that I've seen her in, she's impressive. She is just a phenomenal actor. And the weight of this episode or this, this show or whatever is on her shoulders to portray this person who has investigated this awful situation, this pandemic of, of misuse of pain medicine um, and the blatant marketing uh, that Purdue Pharma used uh, primarily this Richard Sackler, which Matthew Broderick plays Richard Sackler in this. He plays this guy who is just trying to figure out how to make a buck and in the process realizes that what he's doing is hurting people, but does not care, just keeps pushing forward. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch because you know it's real. Even though it's a fictionalized show, man, it is hard to read. It is hard to watch. So, Richard Sackler currently lives in Austin, Texas. His son, David, attended a virtual hearing as part of Purdue's ongoing bankruptcy proceedings. This is on Google right now. I'm just looking at Google for August 20th of 2023. They were required to listen to a series of two dozen statements by people given whose lives have been personally affected by the opioid crisis that the company started. Hmm. It's also said that they still have billions of dollars. Uh, Purdue Pharma filed for bankruptcy in August of this year. Wow. Just wow. They've changed the formula for the OxyContin to be OxyCodone, which is a slow-release tablet. It's only available by prescription, and um, they changed it so that you couldn't crush it and snort it and shoot it and all that other stuff. They, they did something to it, so you can't use it the way it was used before. Um, but I remember when this was happening. I also remember when my mom called me to let me know that they had officially stopped selling this. Um, this sort of highlights the drug industry as a whole 
and their willingness to do whatever it takes to make a dollar, no matter how much harm it causes people. Um, there's really a problem in this country of pharmaceutical companies uh, pushing their weight around where they're sort of running amok without any ramifications of anything. I mean, this guy created a painkiller, supposedly, that was highly addictive um, with a high mortality rate. And just, they show you the flaws of all of it, all the way through, like the, the history of it, how it began, how it continued, how it got worse, how it went off the rails. And they didn't care. They were making so much money, they did not care. Yeah. Well, it's it pretty hard to watch. But I almost feel like it should be mandatory for everyone to watch because it does highlight a lot of what we go through here in this country um, with predatory pharmaceutical companies. I mean, we just got out of a situation where something similar happened. Uh, I'm not allowed to talk about it because if I do, I get banned from every platform. But yeah, history is going to be very unkind to this generation for a lot of things, but primarily for letting the wrong people have the narrative. Yeah. So listen, Peter Berg directed this. I think he was part writer on this. Um, the whole cast nailed this. They really showed the dark and dirty version of what happened and not purposely trying to make the company look bad, but honestly, just a, this is just a fictionalized documentary. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not allowed to talk about how this, is reflected in our personal life. But let's just say that we've seen this up close and it is not great. And um, it affected a lot of people. A lot of people passed away because of Big Pharma. So, yeah. Check out Painkiller. Um. All right, switch gears. Whew. Man. It's been almost a week since I saw it, and I'm still, it's, it's, yeah. Um, so my friend, Josh Treadaway, and I talked on the phone this past week, and he made a comment that uh, a friend of his really was hammering home to him this new show that's on Netflix. It's called Bodies. And um, as he's describing it to him, he said along the way, he goes, oh, <clears throat> my buddy Josh Peake would love this show. Uh, it's right up his alley. So bodies, the premise is uh, four detectives in four different time periods in London find themselves investigating the same murder. So that in itself sounds pretty cool. Um, this is apparently a, a DC comic that had this i guess as a short story maybe or i don't know uh i don't know anything about it i just know that i've seen on the logo that it's a dc comic um stephen graham plays elias mannix uh i've seen him in lots of things um most historically from broadway uh or boardwalk empire uh on hbo um, he played Al Capone and, and just did a fantastic job as him, but I've seen him in other stuff and he's always just so energetic and, and powerful on screen. Um, <clears throat> really a phenomenal actor, but, uh, yeah, he sort of plays the bad guy in this and, uh, much like Loki with the time loop, it, this involves a time looping person. 
he figures out a way to um, go back in time and live a life that is created because he created it. In other words, he manifests his own destiny using time travel. And it's done in a way that I've never seen done before. Um, it's very impressive. Um, the cast is great. It took me a couple episodes to get into the show. There's only <clears throat> there's only eight episodes. Uh, the first and the first and second episode, I'm literally watching it, going, "What am I watching?" Because they jump through time. They do show it well. I mean, they they have the time stamps on the screen and they show you these characters and you get to learn who they are pretty quickly. And everybody's a fantastic actor in this. There's not, there's not one flaw with this show. Um, it's, uh, even the pacing is done on purpose in the beginning because you, the viewer are learning it just like our characters on the screen are learning it until you get to the final episodes where everybody's up to speed, everybody's trying to figure out what to do, and everything that you've learned comes into focus. Um, just a phenomenal show. I watched it. I watched one episode this past week <clears throat> before work, and I was like, okay. And then I watched another episode, and I was like, all right, it's getting a little better. Until finally I was like, okay, listen, <laughs> this show is pretty fantastic. And I watched all of the episodes yesterday all of the rest of the episodes yesterday. It was, it was great. So, um, really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. So anyway, let's talk about something else. Um, I have had plans change. Anybody ever have plans change? So this weekend I was actually supposed to go visit my brother for his birthday. My brother's birthday is on the Marine Corps birthday, coincidentally. Um, I feel weird about, like, I want to be posting stuff on social media about the Marine Corps birthday. And then I also want to post stuff about my brother's birthday. And I don't want one to overshadow the other because they're both very important to me personally. Um, when my brother was born, my mom was very insistent on she wanted her kids to understand what birth was and she actually had got me and my sister out of school my sister brandy is six years younger than me my brother's 12 years younger than me we got out of school we went to a day hospital for those who don't know there used to be a thing called a day hospital and my mom set it up to where she could have birth in this day hospital and my brother Alex was born, and we got to see the birth, and we also clamped the umbilical cord. I was one of the first people to hold Alex. Um, yes, he is my little brother, or was my little brother. He's a big, big giant human man now. Uh, he's a grown man. He's got uh, kids and responsibilities and a wife and mortgage, and and he coaches up at uh, Blue Ridge High School the uh, girls basketball team, whenever he took it over, they, they only had two wins and very quickly he took them to regionals and then to uh, championship playoffs. And he's just done a fantastic job as a coach up there. And more than anything, um, he's become a fixture for the community, for the kids, for that school. And he told them, he said, you know, winning isn't everything. Like he told me when he interviewed, he told them winning is not the goal. My goal is to help these kids win in life. If we happen to win a few games, that's great. But I want them to be better adults and better community leaders. And so I'm going to put my stamp on this and see what I can do to help these individuals grow. And he's done that. He's done a fantastic job of that. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm just, I'm impressed with the person that he's become. Listen, <clears throat> we all have moments of greatness. We all have moments of failing. And um, I'm just, I'm impressed with my brother. I think he's done a fantastic job as a coach, as a father, as a husband. Um, 
I weirdly wanted to go visit him and have a conversation outside of all of that and just have a brother conversation. And it's hard to do that when you're in the middle of responsibilities like being a husband, being a coach, being a father, being all of that. It's hard to just step away and have a conversation of, hey, how are you? Like, how is you, how is you, how is your brain? How is your, are you okay? Are you healthy? Are you happy? Are you like, I, I'm one of those people that likes to check in once in a while with folks and say, okay, yeah, like I get it. We're on the rat race and we're all on the treadmill once in a while. And, but let's just take a breath. How are you okay? Like, and I know he is, I mean, and if he wasn't, he would, he would ask or he would talk to me. Um, One of the things of us being brothers, but also 12 years apart is I'm, I'm here to give advice at times. And there's times where I've been honest with him to the point that I'm like, listen, I don't have advice. Um, we're all just figuring this out and it is good to have people you can be honest with and talk to. And I hope that I've been that for him. Um, it is weird. I know it has to be weird for him to have me be so much older. Um, but it's also a blessing in a way. Uh, if we were both around the same age, we would probably fight a lot more, (laughs) but, uh, I don't know because we're not, uh, we really haven't fought. Uh, I guess not like, not like siblings who are around the same age, but, uh, but yeah, I'm proud of you, Alex. You're doing great. Keep up the good work, buddy. And um, sorry I couldn't make it. I was on my way there. Uh, my truck started giving me trouble. Um, it's I'll make a video about that. That's that's a whole thing. Um, but yeah, I'll get up there and visit you soon. So I'm going to end this. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've checked this out on YouTube, I've made some improvements on the uh, lighting here. and. Um, kind of moving the room around a little bit, trying to get it a little more user-friendly for me. But I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you can, please remember to rate, review, subscribe, share this with your friends. If you want to be on the podcast, talk to me. Let me know. What do you want to talk about? Um, If you got something you want me to check out, a show or a movie or whatever, I'll check it out. Um, I do like recommendations. Uh, I've had some people give me some recommendations lately, and I'll have you on to talk about it if you want. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening. As always, remember, cue the cow. Cue the cow. Move, baby. <laughs>